This is the second video for binomial probability. Uh, we're in independent variables. Uh, well, in the last video, you should have already learned the binomial formula. Uh, and I'll show you the calculator functions and the T84 uh, and the tables uh, while we do some examples. Uh, the first one being this. Uh, two parents carrying uh, genes for type O and A blood. Each of their children has a 25% chance of being type O, because right, that's the recessive. If they plan on having six children, well, what's the probability that three will be type O? And also, let's just show the whole probability distribution. Well, the first thing we have to determine is, is this in fact binomial? Right? We have our checklist that we have to go through. There are four items in that checklist, and yes, you do need to remember what they are and go through them each and every time. There are only two outcomes, type O or not type O. This is actually a very typical way of setting up binomial. There are, of course, lots of blood types, but if we define it as just type O and not type O, it's binomial. Uh, are they independent? Blood type of child two does not depend on the type of child one. All right, so they are independent events. Probability of success, 0.25, which means failure is 0.75. Success defined as having type O. For all children, does not change. And we have a fixed number of trials, n equals six. Ah, it's binomial, which means we can use the binomial formula, uh, which for question A is exactly what we will want to do. Let's write out the formula and then plug in all the numbers. Let's now plug that into our calculator. Uh, a little review of uh, where do you find this combinations function. All right, that would be in math and over here in probability and oh, number three is NQR. Uh, but, of course, remember you have to put the N first. I forgot that. So, six, math, probability, number three, and three, right? So we get 20 combinations, and we'll multiply that times, you know, the rest of it. And it looks something like this. Of course, six minus three is three. Hit enter, ah, and we have the probability of getting three children with type O blood is 0.132 or 13.2% chance that three out of their six children will have type O blood. So now that's one part of the whole probability distribution. Let's draw out the histogram in anticipation of the distribution. We know that there are six possible outcomes. This family could have zero children with type O blood, all the way up to six children, six out of six having type O blood, and the histogram will all be up here. So we have this one, which will be some block you know, around here. I don't want to draw it in quite yet, because what we need is all the other ones. All right, so what we should do is use our fun graphing calculators and use L1 and L2. Let's put all the possible outcomes in L1 and what we'll do is we'll calculate in L2 all the probabilities and then we can graph it. So here's my calculator. I've put in 0 to 6 in L1. I need to put the formula into L2. Uh, let's do that together. We need uh, six doesn't change, that's our N. And our NCR, our number of combinations. But our R value is now all of these. These are our R values. So we'll go into L1 for that. Then we can go 0.25 raised to right, the R, which again, is L1, 
And then 0.75 raised to the, we have to be a little bit careful here, n minus r. Another parentheses. Uh, what's n? n is 6. That doesn't change. Minus r, which is L1. M parentheses, M parentheses. That should do it. Hit enter. We can check. Here's 3 is 0 0.132 to round. All right, checks out. So here are all, all of our probabilities, which I can write out on the board, which should look something like that. And now we can get rid of the calculator and start drawing the histogram. And we could draw it something like this. Uh, I usually start with the biggest column. So that's here at 1, because that kind of sets the scale. And then this one is a little less than half. <laughs> Didn't finish my sentence. And then it comes down here. This is a little bit lower, as a matter of fact. And then we jump down pretty low. And then, you know, these last two are so small, they probably won't really come up. Uh, I like to put on the values. And there is the prob probability distribution. Again, it's right skewed. We talked about this, I believe, in the beginning. Most probable outcome is low because the probability of success is low. So that skews, skews it to the right. Uh, we can marry that term that we used before, which is you know expected value uh, would be really one. One child is really what you would expect to see with type O blood. But like we talked about before, there's variation that we would expect in our distribution. So there's going to be a standard deviation. So uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to clear this out and maybe move my L1, L2 to give myself some more space. There we are. And we can use one of our stats. We can get our X bar, which, of course, really, as we talked about before, should be mu, just the calculator doesn't really know the difference but we are dealing with the whole population because this is the entire sample space. So expected value is 1.5. Of course, this is a discrete variable. Either the child has type O or doesn't. So you can't have 1.5 children with type O blood. Uh, and so uh, the question would be, and this is a good question, uh, do you round up to two or stay at one? Well, seeing the distribution kind of helps you with that, uh, there's actually some, some debate, some choice, I suppose. Uh, you could, if you talk about two, right, that's this column, right, which is kind of in the middle of the biggest and, you know, this whole tail. Uh, the biggest column is one. That's what I usually go with. So I would say the expected value is one child with type O blood, All right? We would expect variation. You know, again, that concept of if there were uh, lots of families in the situation, six children, 25% for type O blood, would every single family have one child with type O blood? No, some would have two, some would have three, some would have zero. There's variation, and this is the measure of that variation. Uh, there are actually formulas for binomial. Again, you know, because of that pattern uh, that lends itself so nicely to formulas, uh, we actually do have some uh, formulas for mu, uh, which is simply NP, and standard deviation, which is the square root of NPQ. Those are good to know. Uh, all you have to do is plug in NP and Q, take the square root, and you should get this value. And then P, you should get 1.5. Uh, you can try that uh, and make sure. 
but those are the, uh, the formulas. Uh, and it's good to know the formulas because we can start uh, anticipating what the values might be and in particular, uh, the behavior when you change n. What happens when n gets bigger, right, our number of trials? In this case, right, n was, you know, six, All right, We have six children. So if the probability of success doesn't change and n gets bigger, what happens to the expected value? It also gets bigger, you know, as, you know, instead of n being six, if n was seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, this whole right skewed distribution is going to get kind of stretched to the right. And that makes some sense. And again, if n gets bigger here, you'd expect sigma to get bigger, which also, you know, if you have more possible outcomes, there's going to be more variation. Let's do another example. Corinne has made 72% of her free throws this basketball season. In her next game, she shoots 10 free throws. First question of many, don't worry. What's the probability of Corinne making nine out of her 10 free throws? Well, again, let's establish that this is in fact binomial. Here we have two outcomes. She either makes it or she misses. Each shot is independent. Probability does not change. This is a bit of, a, an, of an assumption right, because we're talking about a human skill. And so does it change? <coughs> uh, what we're doing is we're essentially building in this assumption. We're now assuming it doesn't. By using the binomial formula, this actually locks it in, which means if, you know, her uh, chance of making free throws changes for whatever the reason, our conclusions might not be accurate. Uh, and we have a fixed number of trials. She's going to be throwing 10 free throw shots. So we can use our probability formula or binomial probability formula, which looks like this and would be wicked fun. But I'm actually going to show you a really cool calculator function uh, that does all this for you, which is really pretty nice. And it's called binomial PDF. And there's going to be a couple of numbers we have to feed into the calculator. But PDF, this is probability density function. Uh, and there's actually going to be another binomial function that I'm going to introduce in just a few minutes. Um, but this is the one that gives you individual uh, outcomes, like nine. The format is, is that, N, P, and R. So for this specific case, you would enter this into your calculator, hit enter, and it would give you your answer. Well, let's now see where that function is. Uh, over here in the blue, it should say dister, which means distribution. So you hit second and you get your distribution. Uh, and there's a whole bunch here. We're actually going to learn a lot of these. But if you scroll down, oh, fair ways. Oh, there we are. Binomial PDF. The other one is binomial CDF. We'll talk about that in a minute. So there's binomial PDF, 10 comma 0.72, probability of success, outcome of nine, hit enter, and there it is. You have your probability. And she has a 14.6% chance of making nine out of her 10 shots. Uh, and so this is a pretty nice function. It's, it's just a shortcut. You can enter in you know, like the whole formula. This just lets you do it a little faster. Uh, now, in addition to the calculator, there's yet another way you could 
get this number. Uh, traditionally, uh, before such fancy calculators existed, people got tired of doing this time and time again, and they made tables. So we still have those tables, and you can look these values up uh, on those tables. Uh, let me pull it up for you. So here is a binomial probability distribution table, which can be found in pretty much any statistics textbook. Uh, it's usually in an appendix somewhere in the back. Notice that we have P, R, and N, just like the binomial PDF formula. It's the same things we need to know. All right. Our probability of success is 72. Well, we have 70 and 75. That's the limitation of a table. All right. Calculators actually you know, really get you more precise answers uh, because we're going to have to do a little interpolation here. Right. Here, I'm going to mark off these columns. Uh, and here, this one is the point 70. Actually, I'm going to put it over here. You'll see why in a moment. And this side is point 75. Uh, next, N. Right, N is 10, 10 shots. Oh, we have to scroll down on the table until we get down to 10. Getting close. There we are. All right, so here is, let's get rid of these. All right, here is, and is 10. All right, remember, these were R. So right here, that's our R value. So we can come over, let's do this, and we have drifted off a little bit, right there. All right, well, our value, or what our value was, was 14.6%, uh, 0.146. Well, that's in between those. <clears throat> you could do a little interpolation. Uh, you know, to be perfectly honest with the you know, develop, excuse me, development of the calculator, uh, not too many people use tables anymore. Uh, and so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time uh, showing you the table. This is, this is how you use the binomial table. It's in the back of the book. Uh, I am going to expect you to know how to use a calculator, however. Um, I'm going to be expecting, you know, precision, which is the same as the calculator. Uh, so, please get, get used to that. Uh, all right, so we have normal or binomial PDF and table to get our answer of 14.6%. For the probability of her making nine out of ten shots. Which means we can now move on to the next question for Corinne. How many free throws can the crowd expect to see Corinne make? All right, so expect to see, right, that's a little keyword there. So we're looking for expected value. Now, what we'll do is why don't we get the whole probability distribution? Because that's really what this question is about. So if we want the whole distribution, L1 is all my possible outcomes. She can make none out of 10 up to 10 out of 10. Then I'm going to get the probabilities in here and graph them. What I'm going to do to make it a little bit easier, maybe I'll use by, whoops, binomial, should be an N, binomial PDF make it a little bit easier for me to type in. We have N, which is 10, P, which is our 0.72, and R, which in this case is L1. Could hit enter, and we'll be able to fill that in. Let's actually look at our calculator, uh, and we'll do just that. 
Here's my calculator. I'm in my stat lists. I have 0 to 10 in L1. I'm up here at L2. So I'm going to go to distributions. I'm actually going to, I find it easier to go up from the bottom. <laughs> Binomial PDF. We have 10 comma 0.72 comma L1 parentheses. Enter. And there we have the whole distribution. That binomial PDF just makes things a little bit faster, which is nice. Then let's get the histogram. All right, so let's get into plot one. We'll turn it on. I want to choose the histogram. This is a little nice review. Frequency is going to be L2. That's my probabilities. Window settings. This often, oops, let's get rid of that. Window settings. What's my minimum? Well, I know my possible outcomes are 0 to 10. Uh, so I'll go 0. I'm going to go to 12 just to give a little space. I definitely want my class interval to be 1. Uh, my Y's are probabilities. So again, I want some pretty small probabilities. If we looked at L2, I probably should have written them up. All right. Well, let me do just that. And there they are. Copy them down. So you could see the probability of her getting 0 out of 10 is actually extremely low. You know, she's got 72% chance of making each shot. Making none of them it seems pretty improbable, All right, and it gets bigger, 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 bigger. Looks like maximum is about seven shots, and then it drops back down. Maximum is 0.264. So over here for my y max, uh, maybe I'll put 0.3. That should be pretty good. Don't really have to deal with the x scale. Let's hit graph, uh, and there we have a beautiful histogram, which we can copy over here. And here you can see I've done a decent rendition of the histogram. Uh, it's fairly small. It would be kind of a little messy to get all the uh, probabilities on top of that. I provided them all on the side, so the information is, is all there. Now, let's uh, talk about this uh, question. How many free throws can the crowd expect to see Corinne make? Well, that's expected value, that's mu. We can calculate mu just by doing NP. We could also use one of our stats. That's not too big a deal, but if you look at this, this is pretty easy. It's actually faster to do it this way. All right, 7.2 throws. Of course, can she make 7.2 free throws? No, she, she can't, and here you look at the a histogram, seven is the tallest. It's what would round normally anyways. So really the expected value is seven. And you should, of course, the question is verbal. The answer should also be verbal. Her fans can expect to see Corinne make seven out of her 10 free throws. All right, now there's an important, you know, we've talked about this several times. Will she make 7 out of 10? Well, no, this is probability. Could she make 8? Sure, she can make, make 8. Could she make 6? Yeah. Uh, we can calculate our standard deviation, which is NPQ. So that would be 10.72 times 0.28, which turns out to be 1.42. Uh, so there's variation that we would expect. Uh, and if you remember correctly, uh, what percentage of the data is captured within one plus or minus one standard deviation? Well, about 68%. Uh, we'll actually revisit that number in a little bit. Um, so about 68% you know, of all of the time she does 10 free throws, she'll make you know, between six and eight or so you know, shots. 
you know, maybe it'll be a hot night and she'll get 10 out of 10. Who knows? Uh, unusual events do happen. They just don't happen very often. That's the essence of probability. Now, on to the third question for Corinne. What is the probability that Corinne will make between two and five shots out of the 10? All right, so now we have a range of values that we want to combine. If we were to write this using probability notation, it would look like this. Probability of getting between two and five shots would be the probability of getting two or three or four or five. All right, if we write it with the and and the or, it gives us what we have to do, right? Addition uh, rule. So we'll be adding these individual probabilities. Now, there's kind of two ways that I would recommend doing it. I mean, there's the long way, which is to just write down each number, add them up in your calculator. You can do it that way. Uh, there's sort of a slicker way of using the histogram. Uh, and there's also, this is where that binomial CDF comes into play. But first, let's look at the histogram. So we're looking from two to five. So down here, we're adding this. There's four and there's five. Right. Like said before, law of probability distributions, some under the curve is one. We're adding a portion of it. Uh, we can use our calculator to do that. Uh, let's call up our calculator. There it is. So what we can do is go into our uh, window setting. Oops, that's not window. There's a window. Uh, and I'm going to set my x min at uh, 2. x max, I could probably actually leave it at 12, what's going to be important is the x scale, right? That defines your class interval. So we go from 2 to 5. If we entered in 3, we would be wrong, unfortunately. Because if you recall, let's, uh, let's look at the graph. Right? And if we hit trace, Minimum five, or, oops, that's, let's get back to window. Oh, wait, right, let's, <laughs> uh, that is two, sorry. It's actually a little hard to read on the screen. It looks like a five. Uh, well, let's actually look. That is five to eight. All right, hold on. <laughs> Momentary confusion. Yes, of course this is five to eight because I hit the right arrow, so I'm on the next column. All right, so I move back over here. It's two to five. <laughs> Duh. All right, so uh, minimum equals two, maximum less than five, so five is not included in this interval. So that's a problem. Right, so bump, this is a little reminder. X scale is not three. It seems like it should be, but it's actually four. And if we hit trace, all right, so now we have from two to less than six, which includes five, but not six. And here is our answer, all right? We have, that looks like 11.8% chance uh, of getting between two and five. But now let's see about the fun new function called CDF. Uh, binomial CDF. So what we can do is go to uh, all right, distribution. And get binomial CDF. And I'll write over here uh, what the syntax is. And it looks just like the PDF function, NPR. It's actually the R functions a little differently for the CDF function. This place for the calculator is actually a range, and it's from 0 to R. So it's going to add up all of the probabilities from 0 
up to R. So to get two to five, uh, if we were to uh, do this, then it's going to add up the histogram essentially from zero to five, which is not exactly what we want. We want two to five. So we have to be a, a little crafty about this. Uh, and if this gives us from zero to five, we need to subtract the part we don't want. Like this. Now again, we have to be a little bit tricky. It's just like the X scale up here. If we were to put two here, it actually will subtract the two. And we don't want to take away the two, we want the two to, to stay. We want to subtract essentially the zero and the one. So we'll subtract up to one. And if we enter that into our calculator, like that, although you can't see all of it, unfortunately, but it's, it's the same as this. Hit enter, huh. we get the same 11.8%. Right, so that's the CDF, uh, the C I think stands for uh, combined density function, something like that, because we're doing a, a whole range which is, you know, which can be helpful, depends on the questions that, that you're given. Of course, as a little foreshadow, it's might as well acknowledge the fact that, look, we have binomial PDF, binomial CDF. What are the other two independent variable uh, probability that we're going to go over? Poisson and geometric. PDF, CDF. PDF, CDF. So we're going to be able to do the same thing with the other two as well, uh, just as a